What's up everyone, it is Dark Viper and I am here to show you how to auto farm trees, including chopping and doing your plank cutting using the sawmill. You can use the regular sawmill or you can use the industrial sawmill. I prefer the industrial because you can just set a totem here and you don't have to ever deal with that coal. You never have to run out of coal. It's basically infinite process here. So the other thing here is um, I've got two designs. One you'll see is this one actually requires movement. Whereas this one, you can stand stationary. This one is going to give you a lot more wood. This one's not going to give you as much, but it's still going to be pretty good. It's just a lot easier to set up. So how this one's going to work, we're actually going to go ahead and chop these trees down in the order that they pop up. They may not always pop up in the same order, but we're just going to make sure we've, we're keeping track of which ones are popping. And we're just going to try to follow that same order in case they do sync up that way in the future. The thing is, is they do kind of randomly, you know, um, pop in directions. So that's kind of unfortunate, but let's just go and position our body here. And we're going to go and record. If you don't know how to use Tiny Task, definitely check out our Autoberry Farm video that is linked in the description so you can learn how to use this tool. But we're going to go ahead and record now. I'm going to equip the pickaxe and then I'm going to go and break this one down. We're going to replace it. So you just got, I got four wood on that one. Then I'm going to do this one. Then I'm going to do this one. We're going over here. Here. We'll just keep tackling these until they stop spawning. We'll give it a moment. There's another one. There's another. There's one. Okay, so I unequipped my pickaxe because I think that is all of them. Let's go ahead and open up the industrial sawmill. We're gonna drop some wood in. We're gonna do two, two cycles of this because it looks like what we got, uh, actually we should do four cycles of this. So just make sure you do the same number of cycles as there are trees. You're always gonna get more wood, which is good. You may have to, if you're doing a ton of trees for this farm, you may need to uh, clear out the chest while you're doing that. So we're gonna go in here and just click it for a little bit. And then we're gonna go and close that. And it looks like they're starting to pop up again. So I'm gonna give a little bit more time until I see some popping up over here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna stop the recording and then we're gonna loop it. Just make sure you've unequipped that pickaxe. I think we might need one more over here. Just make sure you're not moving your camera at all. All right, I think we're good. We're gonna go in and end that recording and we're gonna play it back. You can see it's pretty it's pretty close. It's not spot on. You know, it's, it's a little out of sync, but it's pretty close. And that's okay. Over the span of eight hours, it's okay if you're missing some of these sequences. Now, my other build you're gonna see is pretty much guaranteed because you do have movement. You're guaranteed to get them. So you're not gonna have this kind of randomness of spawns. And get some wood in there. So this is looking pretty good. And then we're gonna see it loop pretty soon here. We got, like, I think like one more or two more to chop down during this loop. The nice thing about this one is you don't have to worry about like, you know, lining yourself up correctly and the precision of everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop that playback, but you can kind of see what we're talking about here on how much you can make overnight. So I'm gonna go and show you this other one. Now that you've seen this one, this one's actually really nice because you know, it's, it's simple in a way. You can actually just kind of bring your character up here, record doing that. It takes you about three minutes to record and then you're good. Now this one is actually pretty nice as well though because you got consistent placement based on how I've set this up. So I'm gonna show you how to do this. So we're gonna go over here. Similarly, we're not gonna make, we're gonna make sure our, our stuff's on the hot bar is the same. You're gonna make sure your, your pickaxe is unequipped. And then when you come back, you're gonna actually be putting um, wood in here and they're gonna be picking up stuff out of here. So you're gonna be picking out cause this is actually gonna go um, in and this is actually being pushed out. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna drop wood out here and then it's gonna go down there and it's gonna, by the time you come back, you're gonna pick up. So next cycle. So we're gonna go and get in here. We're gonna drop in here. We're gonna line ourselves back like this, but we're gonna go full first person real quick. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna use the O key to kind of zoom out if you're on keyboard. 
this will be pretty easy to do. You can do you can use any other um, way to zoom out, but I like this because I can consistently use the same script. As long as I start at the same position, I could um, reopen the same script and not have to have any issues of having to record each time. Whereas this one over here requires you to record each time because you might be over here, here, here. You don't know where your body position is. And you could fix that by creating a little box or something. I didn't have time to set that up for this vid, but you can, you can fix that similar to this. So I'm gonna zoom in and then I'm gonna zoom out a couple like that. And I'm just gonna make sure I'm angled in a way that I like. So I, I kind of like this angle here. And that way I don't get any blockage by trees or anything. I can see this, this brown area pretty nice. Nicely. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and start recording. So I just make sure, you know, like I said, your your pickaxe is not equipped, but I'm going to go ahead and start recording now. So we're going to equip and we're going to hit the brown area. We're going to replace that block and you see where my mouse movement is. And we're going to go run straight at the tree and we're going to move, run to the right. And you're going to kind of start running against this bottom right here. And we're going to align ourselves right here. I'm going to show you this a couple times. So now we're going to switch to pickaxe. We're going to put that back. We're going to put the sapling up. We're going to run at the sapling and we're going to run to the right. I'm going to run down and push myself against this wall. Kill that. Place that. Place that. Run at the sapling. Re-equip pickaxe. Go to the right. And we're going to kind of drag in. I'm going this really slow. You can actually speed this up if you wanted to. Hit that brown. Replace that. Place that. Run at the sapling. Go down. Move to the right. And then we're going to kind of just push down to make sure we get in that little rivet. Boom. Replace, replace sapling, run at the sapling, go to the right. You see a pattern here, right? It's the same thing over and over and over, but we're guaranteed wood. It's a big difference between this one and the last one is you might do the wrong one, but every single one of these has wood ready. And the reason why we push it up against that wall is just to make sure we end in, you know, at the same spot every single time so that we don't get any kind of physics variances. And we're gonna push up against same place here, hit that sapling. We're going to run at the sapling again. We're going to run to the left. And whenever you get close to these, just kind of push up against the wall so that you're not, in case your camera's angled weird, you don't run into one of those little spots there. And you definitely want to give it some time each time you get into one of those because timing's everything. And especially in this macro, you got to make sure you time things correctly. So what we're going to do is when we get to the back, when we get back here, we're going to sit here for a little moment to reset the time. And we're going to go ahead and open the industrial chest. We're going to drop some wood in. The nice thing about this setup is you can drop a lot more wood in and you don't have to drop that much in and I have a lot, so I want to. And you're gonna click this eight times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're gonna close that and you can see we're ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording and we're gonna loop it. And if you accidentally move the camera, you can kind of just, just adjust it slightly. I did adjust my camera movement on accident during this playback, but it looks like it's still running pretty well. I'll move it a little bit more. There we go. Yeah, this is looking good. And if for some reason you want to change the wood type, you know, the tree type, just swap out the third slot. So you can use the same script. Just swap out the third slot so that you know, you, you know, now you, now I can do birch with the same exact script. You just need to, you know, adjust your camera angle to match what you did previously. It, it's not, it's not too hard to do. So as you can see, this is actually working really, really well. Um, you can loop this all night. You could actually level this up a bit. And imagine the pathway having berry bushes. So in between each tree, you're actually harvesting berries. On top of that, imagine at the end, if you had your auto clicker for your onions or iron or whatever you'd like, you can interconnect everything. And I might actually show a video of that later. So you could show the ultimate auto farm of every aspect of your base could be fully automated. If you were to try it, um, I might, if you want, if you want me to make the video like that, let me know and I'll hook things up like that. It may not be hooked up to my main, but we'll see. I'll see if I can set something up like that. That'd actually be pretty cool to show off, but only if you want to see it. I still think dedicated farming is the best way to go. And if you really want the ultimate auto farm, it would definitely be having multiple devices and being able to auto on multiple accounts. So the way I would set it up if I were you, if you're a really hardcore player and you like to auto um, to the extreme, what I would do is I would actually set up an account just for iron so that you can have as you know a ton of iron. And then I would do the same for onions. So I I basically dedicate one account just to onion farming. I dedicate an account just for wood farming and I would just have multiple accounts running. If you really were that hardcore, you know, with alts. But in this case, I think this is pretty chill. You know, I think you can just kind of dedicate a day to doing one or the other, depending on what you need. Um, but again, you know, if you just needed some quick wood, I would actually recommend not even worrying about auto. What you could do is you could just do this. 
Um, I've been doing this for a while now. You just create a little farm like this. And a lot of people don't realize you can do this. And I'm actually gonna, I'm working on a separate video that kind of shows like, you know, overall tips for the game. But what you could do is you could just, you know, stand here and click these. And I've been doing this since launch. And a lot of people would come into my my islands and be like, dude, you, your, your trees are too close together. I'm like, no, they're good. Because what you do is you wait for one of them to pop. So one of these will pop up and be ready. And you just, you know, take that tree out and then another one will pop and another one will pop. So you don't have to run around the map. And as soon as people saw what I was talking about, they're like, oh, that's cool. So I think uh, a lot of players don't actually know that they can just, you know, sit around and just have a bunch of trees next to them like this. If you wait for them, they'll pop shortly after the other one got cut down. But if you want a lot of wood, like you're hardcore and you want to auto, this is the way to do it. I would actually say this is the best one. So um, the way this one is set up, so the way this one is set up is it's basically every five has a little inlet. So every, I think it's like five or so. Um, it doesn't really matter to be honest. Like you can do this however distance you want. You can adjust it to yours. The one thing I would say is if you're going to do it the way I did it, make sure you have two blocks here because you could try doing one block, but sometimes you'll miss it and then it really screws up your, your timing. So you're going to want to come through here and then you're going to kind of move down. So I create a little inlet and it's just straight across. It could be on this side. It could be on that side. It doesn't matter. But I like this because I could just stand here and then I know I'm lined up, right? So because I'm running against this, I'm lined up to that every single time consistently. Go up against that, going up against that. Same thing, right? And then you look under it. It's just like the berry farms. It's not anything complicated. If you look under this thing, it's no different than the berry farm paths. I do, I do space these. I think that's like 10, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it's nine. So if I counted the actual trunk, the tree itself, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then so on. So they're all pace, they're all spaced the same. And I do that because sometimes these giant trees come in, like this one, and it causes other trees not to be able to spawn. I probably could have done it one or two blocks closer, but I I, I didn't. And I'd love to see some of your uh, inspirations from it or your own uh, auto farms for wood. Sure, a lot of you have figured you know your own techniques out. On top of that, I want to give you a quick update on my auto berry farm over here. So I've actually completely revamped it and I've been making between 10 million to 14 million depending on how long I do it for. So, and that's just for the, that's just for the berries. I'm not even talking about the seeds. So I got about 2,100 seeds from that farm, um, just in one day of harvesting. So imagine getting 2000 seeds right after one night of farming. That's actually pretty crazy. Imagine if I did that 10 times, then I'm going to end up with 20,000. And imagine if I did it 20 times, you can see where I'm going with this. So big money. And if I sold all 2,100 of those seeds, then I would be getting a lot of coin if I'm selling it for 8,000 a piece. You're looking at about 16 million on top of my 10 million. I'm making about 25, 26 million. Um, and that's just for nine hours. If I did a 10 hour night or even longer, I would be doing pretty good, pretty good. But yeah, this is what it looks like now. So you can see, remember before I used to have the zigzag too short. It used to be like this way and this way and this way. Well, it, by doing that, you're actually slowing yourself down because anytime you do a turn, you have to kind of slow, you know, you slow down, especially when you're full throttle, you still, you're still slowing down. So in this case, you've got a longer stretch. So you're going to be able to pick up a lot more berries. And I have a lot more bushes in this one than my old one. So this is much, much, much more effective. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did like it, hit that like button and smash the subscribe button if you're new. And I'll see you all next time with some more Skyblock vids. Peace.